Hey everybody, this is Dave from Allen Adventures 4x4 and today I'm going to do a walkthrough of the exterior of the vehicle. Uh, I'll definitely do a, a more detailed version of the interior, but I'm going to do that on a separate video. Uh, I've done quite a bit to the interior, so I'm going to just do the exterior today. Uh, just a quick walkthrough, we're out in the mountains of North Carolina, uh, right outside of Grandfather Mountain. Um, i tell you, this is absolutely incredible weather. Um, it's, I mean, today I think it's getting up to 70. Uh, it's at the end of October. Uh, fantastic day today. Uh, the weekend has just been incredible. Uh, well, guys, let's go ahead and start. Uh, so with the front, I went on and did the ARV bumper. Um, this is the full deluxe Bondi. I, I highly recommend this. Uh, I wanted uh, a full protection is why I went all the way across. Uh, they do have one where it cuts off the little stubby uh, because we do a lot of... Um, you know, overlanding and, and, and a lot of a lot of different variations of trails, not just rock crawling. I wanted to have that because uh, I feel like it gives us a little bit more protection in the area that I uh, go through most. Uh, with that being said, um, I was uh, going to get the 10S Platinum, but I ended up doing the 12S Platinum. Uh, the only thing about that was is that I had to carve out a little bit of the frame itself uh, to be able to fit that in there. Uh, that was definitely a little pain, but uh, we made it happen. I'm not sure if the 10S Platinum would have that uh, same issue. I know it's a little bit smaller in dimensions, uh, but I would assume that um, it, it would be able to fit. It did say that the 10s would, would be able to fit, but I'm not sure about the 10S Platinum. So I was thankful to get the, the 12. Um, I've only been able to use it one time. I, I've been trying to use it more, but I've only been able to use it once. Um, so far, I absolutely love it. Uh, and then these were actually red and I had these powder coated. I felt like it just tied in everything in the color of the Jeep. I don't have a Rubicon. This is a Willys package. Um, so I felt like the black would, would, uh, accent that I actually kind of like the Chrome. I, I thought about doing this, um, as well, uh, the skid plate. I thought about doing that as uh, powder coated black as well, but I kind of liked it. I, I felt like it matched everything. Um, so that's the reason why I, I kept that that way. Um, but so far, absolutely love it. Only thing I'll change up here, I'll do a factor 55 uh, uh, buckle um, mount up front. Uh, that'll be uh, up and coming here pretty soon. Um, but then guys, moving over towards the lights, um, all the lights are KC's, uh, other than the sides. Uh, I do want to replace the sides, uh, but fog lights, uh, running lights, everything is KC's. Um, obviously you can see I, I did the amber covers, uh, with the front lights. Uh, absolutely love those things. Uh, the ditch lights, those are incredibly powerful. Um, very impressed with KC. I've had to call them on a couple different um toms and kc staff guys you crushed it out uh you guys have been extremely helpful and I, i'm very grateful for you guys uh i actually ordered by accident the wrong ones with the back mounts for these fog lights um contacted kc the return process was incredible um these guys they, they got me in uh the new ones that, that mounted to uh this um and you know complete easy return so thank you guys kc you guys Put out an incredible product. Uh, well, guys, moving forward, um, I just recently did um, the Yeti XC Steer Smarts. And so I did the tie rod and drag link. Uh, so both of these, uh, I did that. And, and on the other side, I'll show, I did the sector mount as well. Obviously, you can see the Fox ATS 2.0 stabilizer. That thing is incredible. Um, I had a lot of bump steer and that thing definitely minimizes and I wanted to go ahead and just kind of do everything. Um, but over here, I'll show you the uh, sector mount brake as well. So this is the sector mount uh, kind of in the corner, this little added support as well. And then obviously when you're uh, seeing now, you're seeing the Dobbison's coils. Uh, so I ended up doing the Dobbison's. I did medium duty in the front and I did a heavy duty in the rear. Obviously I had the Olin's shocks as well. Uh, these things are absolutely incredible. A fully adjustable, um, you know, I'm, I've had nothing but great things to say about Olin's. Uh, it took a little bit to dial it in because there's so many clicks of adjustment. Um, I, I, I can't remember exactly how many clicks, but I, I tell you what, I'm, I'm so impressed with Olin's, uh, based out of Hendersonville, North Carolina. These guys put out amazing products. Um, 
I, I ride mountain bikes as well, and I can't wait to get my hands on uh, some uh, Olin shocks for the mountain bike as well. Uh, but going back to the uh, the Dobinsons, uh, I'm running the medium cooler in the front. Uh, because I have so much weight in the front, uh, I didn't want to do the light. Uh, so I feel like the, and it's a three and a half inch lift, so the Dobinsons, uh, you know, I feel like balance it out, especially for how much weight I'm having in the back. So the medium coil with the front bumper, the winch, um, it levels out everything with the rear. Uh, and then the Olin shocks to dial them in. Uh, everything's primo um, with, with being able to balance. Um, and then going back up front, one last thing I would like to point out. Um, the only other thing, since it is not a Rubicon package, I went and got the um, the JKS manufacturing. I got the um, uh, sway bar disconnects. Uh, so easy sway bar disconnects. These things are kind of greasy at the moment, but uh the sway bar disconnects these things are absolutely incredible uh just a quick disconnect pull the pin pull it out and then uh strap it up top up here and these things are out of the way super easy uh highly recommend that just so you can get a little uh, flexing off road um highly recommend those and with the 35s the three and a half inch lift absolutely no rubbing whatsoever um i think that uh, my next purchase will be 37 so i'll do that and honestly i i've, I've done some flexing with this same setup I truly think that I can actually get uh, get away with no rubbing uh, with the three and a half inch lift. And there is some other lift packages that I've been eyeballing and I'll, I'll have to uh, put in another video whenever I decide to do that as well. Uh, everything's balanced out. Um, it rides incredibly well. Uh, come around to the side. Actually, we'll go around to the other side. All right, guys. So with the tire package, I do have the 35s on here now. Uh, I'm, I'm definitely going to do 37s. With the Dana 44s, I consider the 40s and going that route, uh, but with a, a, a light to three and a half inch lift, I, I'm not, I'm, I don't want to go larger than that. Uh, plus, these shocks are up to three and a half. Um, you know, I, I drive a lot, uh, so I want to have it a situation where uh, I don't want it too high, but I still like to get after it a little bit. And unfortunately, 37s is the biggest I can have for up under the, the back of the, the JT as well. Um, so 37s will be the next thing that I do uh, when it comes to tires. Um, I'll tell you what though, I am highly impressed with the Yokohamas. These are the Gear Lenders uh, MTs. Highly recommend these. They ride incredibly smooth on the interstate. Um, I can I have nothing but great things to say about this. Uh, they have worn evenly all the way across. I do rotate them quite a bit. Uh, but with that said, absolutely love the Yokohamas. These are fantastic tires. Um, and super light as well. When it comes to tires, uh, I wanted a very light tire. Obviously, with these builds that uh, you know we get into, uh, you know weight is definitely a big factor. And I wanted to have something a little bit lighter. So I know the the Geolanders and also the uh, the Coopers are extremely light tires. Uh, I like these a little bit better than the Coopers. And so really, it was these or the Nittos. Uh, the Nittos were by far so much heavier. Um, and I was like, you know, for, for the price point uh, and, and the road noise and everything of that nature, I, I, I really wanted to go for these. Um, I, I, and I'm very happy. I'm very happy I did. Uh, to complement those, I have the Icon. These are the, This is the Rebound Pro in satin black. Although it looks kind of dusty right now, but it, it is satin black. Uh, uh, these things are great. I've, I've, I've aired down to 10 PSI. The whole package is absolutely incredible. Um, I have nothing but great things to say about Icon. Uh, guys, you, you make a great product. Um, um, was interested in, in your lift as well um, and, and still might consider that as well. I know you're doing, uh, I believe, a three and a half or four and a half inch lift other than just a two and a half. At the time of this release, uh, Icon only had a two and a half inch lift. And I really wanted that three and a half to bring it up just a little bit more. All right, guys, we're moving on through. Um, I haven't done anything on the, uh, the sliders yet. Uh, there is a couple that I'm strongly considering, uh, and I've seen somewhere they keep this and then add a bar. Uh, I've seen some other, some other guys do those. Uh, that'll probably end up being what I do. Um, and, and with that, uh, well, guys, moving on back, uh, this is the uh, Smart Cap Evo, the RSI Smart Cap Evo. This is the Adventure Series. So this series has the molly panels and obviously it is uh, no glass here. And so whenever it is going off road, you don't have to worry about the glass breaking. You can be extremely hard on this thing. I've done some incredible trails 
and and this thing holds up very well i, I am i am very impressed uh i met a couple of the representatives um uh, uh at overland expo east and um uh, nothing but great things to say the gentleman came over and we talked um and he was taking pictures of everybody who had rsi uh smart caps there uh and there was actually quite a few uh, I, i've been to other jeep events jeep beach and so forth and i haven't seen that many uh actually at jeep beach down in daytona i didn't i don't believe i saw one there uh but overland obviously uh overland expo i, I did see quite quite a bit and uh so it's good to see these things are coming out uh very impressed with this thing i can't wait to get a rooftop uh tent on here obviously with the built-in rails this thing holds 770 pounds on top uh that's static uh and obviously when you're moving i believe is it cuts down uh quite a bit but you know you're only gonna have you know a couple hundred pounds up there whatever you're traveling anyways um but these gas struts are absolutely incredible as soon as you pop that latch these things pop back up um, nothing but great things to say about this uh, me and my wife have, have sat up there we sat up there for overland expo uh, and watched everybody come in i have not gotten the new latches yet the gentleman from rsi was mentioning that there are the new the latches where you can open them from the inside uh, i don't have those yet um, those would definitely be something that i would strongly consider especially having kiddos uh, kiddos want to get in here and they want to play uh, most of the time i have it pretty pretty stocked out but other times that you know, just for safety concerns, I, I probably will upgrade the latches to have where they are the quick uh, latches. Um, but other than that, the Molly panels serve a great purpose. On the other side, I want to put the uh, the Julka, uh, the hot water uh, tap. I'll put that on the other side uh, and mount that up here. Uh, that's going to be coming soon, so keep a lookout for that, guys. Uh, and then coming to the back, guys, I'm not going to do too much because we've already done a video. Um, of the camp setup, so you guys have already seen that this is the medic 95 it's a fridge freezer combo on the iu cab tilt slider uh i've already touched briefly on I, I do like this system because i'm able to get it out but the downfall is is that it's on a tilt and so therefore everything that you have in here you have to pack it just right or if you if you're having eggs in certain spots you're going to obviously break your eggs uh and have a big old mess all over all your stuff so definitely strategic packing on the tilt uh, so I consider the the deck system, the slide to come all the way out, uh, and so that way I can miss this. I'm not, I'm having this problem to hit here, um, so I'm 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 curious uh, of solutions to do here. Um, you know, either longer struts, but if you do longer struts, I might have to relocate the bracket to be able to close in there, um, or I could just unhinge it and do maybe a quick release. But then you know I, I'm you know having to do some different stuff. If anybody has any suggestions, please let me know. I'm, I'm trying to figure out how to how to make that happen. Uh, I did see at Overland Expo, the, the guys had a tray that slid out and you pull the handle down, the whole thing slid down level. The downfall with that is, is that it does not, there's not one that's compatible with the 95. It's only with the 75 liter. Um, just because of the, the, the weight of the 95. I mean, you pack this thing full and it, it has a lot of weight to it. Um, so there have to be massive struts on that to be able to hold the weight of the 95. Um, so guys, with that said, um, I'll come around just to the back corner just for briefly. Uh, I do have the deck system. This is the side that I keep uh, dry goods and so forth. Uh, I keep that on the left side just because I have the fridge open. So if I'm grilling and so forth, I can have the fridge open and all my food items here. Uh, this is a little unorganized at the moment. Uh, it does look a, a whole lot more organized than this whenever, you know, I'm going out with the family. This is just, I came out, uh, I camped last night, and this is kind of just some stuff thrown in. Uh, but anyways, the um, dry food goods on this side, bread, all your canned stuff, I have it on this side. The Gazelle T4 Overland Edition. That's the T4 Plus, sorry. And also the 500 uh, watt Jackery. Uh, I use the 500 watt Jackery for all my lighting, uh, recharge my phone, stuff of that nature. Um, I have the 2000 around the corner that I actually have the fridge running off of. So I very ever rarely even have to ever charge up the, the smaller one. Uh, I could run all weekend, lights, day and night and not have anything to worry about. Uh, the fridge, the same concept. With the 2000, I can run it forever. Uh, come around on this side, guys. I do have the Jackery 2000 and I do have the water port um the water port i believe is a four gallon and you can either do it uh, by a bicycle pump or you can do by the top uh to be able to have a shower at camp absolutely incredible 
As I mentioned earlier, um, uh, the jewel cut mounted up here so to get things out of the way. So I can just run my hoses from the propane tank up here. The shower system, the awning of on this side, uh, just make life a whole lot easier, guys. Uh, but I do have the 2000 watt Jackery. Uh, pretty much I leave this one in full time. Uh, there's no really need to bring this out. I have a hardware kit, a uh, Dometic hardware kit, and then I uh, have obviously a charging um, uh, cables to be able to charge both of those while you know you're at camp or driving. I do have a Jackery 100 uh, watt solar panel as well. I throw up on the roof for the most part. Um, and I have that. It's kind of hard to get uh, in the mountains of North Carolina, but any any like open event, Overland Expo, so forth, um, it came in it came in great handy uh, to have that solar panel. I was able just to throw that thing up there. Um, and guys, lastly, we'll just come right over, right on down here. So the only other thing I did up front, uh, I do have a Midland 500, and I go into more detail about the uh, the interior. Uh, but this is, uh, I believe, the 6 dB uh, antenna that I have from Midland. Uh, actually, I saw those guys at, uh, at Overland Expo um, and, and got a, a new uh, latch here. Hopefully, by the next video, you'll see that new latch in here. Because uh, I want to do a snorkel here. And if I do a snorkel, then I'm not going to be able to keep this here. The antenna, I believe, it goes around it. But uh, I have to uh, find a new location. So I, I picked up another uh, uh, Midland bracket and the guys, the guys over at Midland, um, that Overland Expo E. Uh, thank you guys. You guys uh, helped me out with that. I talked to you guys for a while. Uh, thank you all so much for, for helping us out and, and trying to figure out a, a different mount. I believe you guys' mount that, that I picked up, it, it was right on top, uh, but super excited about putting that on. Can't wait to install that. All right, guys. Well, that wraps it up for the video for the exterior. Again, I'm going to do a video for the interior, but there's quite a bit of stuff on the interior that I want to touch base on. Uh, so I'm going to do that in a separate video. I do have um, some other items that I'll, I'll mention from the interior, but really is for the outside. Uh, and that goes for, you know, recovery gear, uh, ARB compressor. I have the dual zone uh, compressor that I keep in the back as well. I hope you enjoyed and look out for that interior video. And we'll definitely see you soon, guys. Thanks.